For GateWorld.net, I am David Reed, and I'm once again here with Mr. Bo Bridges. Bo, thank you so much for your precious time. I understand you're very busy. Uh, I'm glad to be here in uh, Chicago at Stargate Convention. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. When did you arrive? I got in uh, last night. Okay. Yeah. You've been to and around today. Where have you been today? Uh, I went to a little, uh, what do you call those things uh, where they have, you know, people bring out all their old stuff. Uh, what oh, is it? Flea market. Flea market, yeah. Okay. I saw it out of the window of the hotel. <laughs> so I had an hour or so, so I just walked around, yeah. Did anyone stop you? No, not over there. <laughs> no. Is this your first time in Chicago? Or you no, I've worked uh, several times in Chicago, but a long time ago, so I haven't been here for, you know, for, for a while. But I think it's a fun city. I went last night, I had uh, a little sushi dinner uh, down on State Street, so it was good. Bo, word of SG-1's cancellation mm -hmm. has now managed to circulate through almost all of fandom. There are still a few people finding out. And no one's yeah. really happy uh, for good reason. The show has taken a marvelous turn, in my personal opinion, a marvelous turn mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. What is your take on the cancellation of the show? One of my favorite books that I ever read in my life uh, was a book I read, oh gosh, I must have probably been in my early 20s by a man named Alan Watts, W-A-T-T-S, and the book is called The Wisdom of Insecurity. And what it basically says is that uh, all our lives, our parents and people like uh, older than us, our teachers and everyone, keeps telling you that to find real happiness in life, you must be secure. You want security in a job, security in family, relationships, financial, all of that. You want to be secure, and then you will be truly content. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Watts also points out that what a, a pain in the butt that is, because <laughs> the truth is there is no such thing yeah. as security. The only thing you can really count on is that things will change. So yes. if you spend your whole life looking for that secure, unchangeable place, you're going to be pretty frustrated most of your yes. life. You need to just jump into the sea of change and go for it. And, you know, uh, change usually isn't easy in the beginning. Like, this wasn't easy for any of us to know that this uh, show was canceled. I'm sure the fans who've been watching it for 10 years feel the same, yeah. But um, I think change is, is good, too, because it, it, uh, it kind of reinvents life for us when it happens. And uh, I know that MGM certainly really values the, the uh, Stargate franchise and they intend to make some movies with it. I, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but that's what their intention is. And it sure made them a whole lot of money, so I would imagine <laughs> that would be an impetus for them to continue. Right. We went out uh, with very strong ratings, so that's a good feeling. It wasn't like we were uh, week and the knees there. I, mean, we, I think um, the last show, the 200th, well, I think scored nine. huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they, I, I learned a long time ago in this business, it's pretty hard to make sense of a lot of the decisions that are made. So I just kind of come in, do my thing best I can. And I had a great run with the show. It was so much fun. And uh, of course, I did a couple of Atlantises in the beginning and three uh, this year and that show I think is continuing so maybe I'll pop up on that one I don't know there's been talk about some of the Stargate people going over there Rob Cooper has assured us that SG-1 will continue in some form be it a miniseries a film uh, uh, season 11 if they can secure another network sci-fi may not allow that or potentially an internet series um, mm -hmm. would you be interested in staying with the show if it moved on to another form Oh, sure. I think uh, this is a real exciting time for media right now. I mean, yes. it's taking so many different forms. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what, what its next, uh, next form will be. Episode 200. What a hurrah. Yeah. Did you ever think that you would be playing the Wizard of Oz? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun, a floating head. We had to do it twice because there was some mess up with the with the uh, with a camera or something so it was it was crazy 
But uh, yeah, when I read that script, I couldn't make hide nor hair of it. I didn't understand <laughs> what it was. For a good, in a good way, I hope. Well, sort of. I mean, I didn't understand it at yeah. all. And then when I did it, I didn't understand it because there was so many little in sci-fi things that I that I wasn't party to. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I watched it. I had a good time. It was fun. Fun seeing all the old uh, people back. And, you know. Yeah, 200th episode, that was quite a milestone for mm -hmm. the, the franchise. So you probably, I would imagine, were feeling like, okay, it's there, 200. You know, I'm just kind of along for the ride. No, I felt, I felt good about being part of it um, because eight years is a lot different than 10 years. Mm -hmm. And the show didn't kick into those groundbreaking uh, moments until... Ben and Claudia and myself came aboard. Right. And, you know, I certainly, from speaking for myself, I enjoyed it so much. And I, I feel that uh, I am a part of that show now. Good. And I always will be because, uh, you know, I was along for a good part of it. And I, I think it's a wonderful show. And I think it'll go on in some fashion. The episode Uninvited, mm -hmm. that was a great opportunity to see a good deal of character development, particularly between Landry and Mitchell. Yeah. And I've been wondering, ever since I saw that episode, how could you two keep a straight face with the <laughs> duck call? Yeah. We didn't too much. <laughs> I happen to I, I happen to really love birds, anyway. Oh, okay. And I didn't I don't think that Rob uh, knew that when the guys came up with that story. But, oh, I laugh when I read that. <laughs> because uh, I like to tease my own son when he was younger, especially about uh, you know that there was this fictitious bird club that he and I belonged to. And I would talk <laughs> hey, about it in front of his, not Dylan, but my son Zeke, and I would oh, talk Zeke. about it in front of his friends. I would say, let's have a meeting of the bird club. And he'd say, Dad. <laughs> you know, so I went back to a lot of that when I was doing that thing with Ben. OK, great. What, is, what was your inspiration um, for acting originally? Was it your father? And did he push? Mm -hmm. for you and Jeff to enter this industry, or did he try to dissuade you from doing that? Yeah, many people ask, ask me uh, if my father, you know, what hand he had in my career, choosing my career. And, you know, he had a lot to do with that. I mean, he gave me my first job in this business, which uh, is the hardest thing to get in show business, is that first opportunity. But most importantly, he was just a great dad all, all the way down the line. He was always there for me, and for my brother and sister. Um, and as far as show business is concerned, he really enjoyed being an actor and loved it. Uh, but he made myself and, and the rest of the family, uh, the kids aware that if we wanted to try it, that uh, it was a very, um, you know, uh, very risky business, uh, not a lot of security like we talked about. Um, and that if you really wanted to do it, it was something you had to be prepared to sacrifice a lot for and to work hard. Uh, so, you know, kind of all of that was true. When I first started off, I was trying to make a mark for myself and maybe try to distance myself a little bit from my dad. But uh, I found out that uh, once I got into it, that y you did have to, you know, bring something to the table because, you know, maybe one or two jobs you could get there having someone's uh, word help you. But uh, Oh yeah, no, he was he was great, and he also gave me my tools, how to taught me how to do it. Last question for you: mm -hmm. What do you intend to do next? <laughs> I have uh, three films coming out. I uh, did the Good German, uh, Steven Soderbergh directed it, and George Clooney mm -hmm. is in it, um, and then I uh, I did um, Charlotte's Web. Yes. Down in Australia. That's right. That's a mixture of cartoon and real people. There's, I think, just two real actors, or maybe there's two or three characters. Uh, Dakota Fanning yes. plays a little girl, and I'm playing her shrink. <laughs> and, uh, and then I did um, also uh, a movie called Spinning Into Butter with Sarah Jessica Parker. And so all three of those will be coming out. So I suppose in the next few months, that's how I'll be getting busy is just going out and promoting those shows. Yeah. I hope you're looking forward to some time off. I am. Yeah. <laughs>